Hi everyone, today I, Camila Zela and Daniel Steiner will present our case study. The title is Grapevine Root and Wood Diseases. The course coordinators are Larissa Maidemio and Gid Nabel. Our case study is regarding a disease that occurred in Legado Winery. Legado Winery started production in 2004 in Campo Largo, Paraná, Brazil. The region is characterized by subtropical climate with mild summers and precipitation throughout the year. The earth has a total area of 15 acres. Different cultures of Vitis vinifera and Vitis labrusca are produced on the farm. Most are on the pulsing rootstock. In 2018, on average, 33 applications of fungicides were performed on Vitis vinifera cultivars. But following integrated management measures, such as climatic observations, soil cover management, and the use of microorganisms of the genus Bacillus produced on the farm, there was a reduction to nine applications. Under favorable climatic conditions, some diseases have been reported in the orchard over the years, such as grapevine leaf spot caused by Special do Cercospora vitis in Bordeaux cultivar, down in mildew caused by Plasmopora viticola, and gray mold caused by Botrytis cinerea. As an example, a complex diseases processed started some years ago at the Legado Winery. Gray trunk diseases are becoming a major challenge to manage at the Legado Winery specifically in both older and young plantations of Merlot cultivars, as they reduce the vigor of the plants and cause plant death. The symptoms are observed in circle. Some of the pathogens associated with these diseases in the orchard were Fusarium, Botrytosferia, and Cylindroscarbon. In this table, we can see a health plant here, and beside it a plant with grape trunk diseases here. It is possible to observe a reduction in the vigor of the, the grape plants. And here are the symptoms caused by the pathogens on the grape trunks. Grape trunk diseases are caused by a complex of fungi, so many species can cause the diseases, and the height Incidence is for Botrytosferia, caused by Botrytosferacea fungi of the genera Botrytosferia, Diplodia, and here we, we can see the other genera to cause these diseases. And other pathogens can be caused great trunk diseases, for example, Eutypia dieback and Pomops king and black food. Here we can see the conidia about these fungi. At the last, grape trunk diseases can caused by esca diseases. And here we can see the species about these diseases. Here we can see the symptoms about esca complex, Botrytosferia dieback, Eutypia dieback. The symptoms of esca diseases are, are strips on the leaves and sudden wilting of either part of the plant or the whole plant, frequent in older vines. External symptoms can also include small black spots called a back measles on the berries. The wood of vines affected by these diseases showed, shows black spots, vascular streaks, discolorations and necrosis. External symptoms of, of Eutypia deft appear at the beginning of the growing seasons, with student shoots, shots, and sh shortened internode. The leaves are small, chlorotic, 
shell-shaped and deformed. The grape on the effect stems either do not form or are small, poor development and spears. The winner wood of Eutypia infect vines shows grazing head-shaped necrot sectors, indistinguishable from Botrytosferia dieback cankers. The simultaneous presence of these pathogens on the same vine can result in, a, in overlapping symptoms. Gr regarding infections caused by grape trunk diseases, the pathogens Eutypia dieback, Botrytosferia dieback, Pomopsis dieback, and those responsible for Esca diseases are disseminated through the dispersion of sporo by the wind. An important note related to these pathogens is that they have already been reported to cause the diseases in other fruit trees, which can serve as inoculum source for grapevine infections. Pruning shears are also ca capable to cause causing infections of the wines. Black food pathogens are found in soil and nurseries. And, in addictions, the pathogens causing grape trunk diseases can remain dormant for a long period in the wines. An hypothesis have been raised that different forms of stress, biotic and abiotic, can result in onset of the symptoms. The accurate diagnosis of the disease cannot be performed solely based on the symptoms observed in the plant. Therefore, traditional molecular and serological procedures are recommended for the identification of related pathogens with different virulence levels according to the species or even stream, and which may have different sensitivity to a given treatment. To correctly diagnose the disease, handle samples must be taken, represent the entire venator and sent to a phytopathology lab, such as the Lemide at the Federal University of Paraná. In addition, soil samples should be taken and sent to a nematology lab to verify the presence of nematodes and to soil lab to perform a report on the nutrients available in the soil. So, how do make a diagnosis. First, the vine trunk with symptoms, you need to isolate this. So the isolate of the diseases can be performed in PDA culture medium. The columns obtained are identified morphologically in terms of the size and shape of conidia. Then the DNA will be extracted by the method of Owens and Salazaki and PCR will be performed with the primers ETS and beta-tubulina. The trunk disease is ID program, which is a similar to a gene bank platform, will be used to deblast the fungal sequence obtained and identify the genera associated with grape trunk diseases. Uh, morphological analysis are indicated for pathogens related to uh, ESCA diseases such as Phyremonia chlamydospora and Phycremonium minimum. This fungi show easily spor sporulation and easily identifiable conidia. However, the other species do not sporulate easily in cultural medium and have similar morphologic structures. Thus, it is necessary to complain with the molecular analysis. As grapevine trunk disease is more complex compared to other grapevine disease, control measures are a challenge for producers and technicians in the area, as the disease latency period is indefinite under field conditions, 
the detection of diseases becomes difficult, and some management practices must be adopted in a preventive way. Now, there are no curative management measures for this disease and no cultivars resistant to grapevine trunk disease. The management of grape trunk diseases must be holistic and integrated with interdisciplinary approach undertaken by plant nurseries and adult orchards that integrated phytopathology, agronomy, viticulture, epidemiology, biochemistry, physiologic, and genetics. This approach was implemented at the Legado Winery, which in 2018 had 70 plants killed by grape trunk diseases and a number reduced to none deaths theft in this year. The first management measure is to buy vine seedlings from certificated nurses and high-quality high seedlings. Then, plant at the right time and carry out the fertilization correctly. A very important measure to be adopted in orchards is the elimination of all diseased or dead parts of the plant, including the roots and the winter pruning remains. Care during the pruning period is essential for the health of the vineyard. Gramage reported that pruning should be avoided in wet periods and pruning loads should be treated with preventive fungicides. The benzimidazoles are reported in the literature as efficient for the treatment after the pruning of the vines. A limiting factor for the use of this chemical group is the selection of resistant population, as reported in Pfizer Cremonium Minimum Trocarbenosin. For triazoles, in vitro, in vitro tests were very promising regarding the inhi inhibition, the germination and mycelial growth of pathogens to cause grape trunk diseases. Strublerins are highly used to control area plant diseases in grapevines. And in a study by Imposat and Grubb, it was observed that pyroclostrobin demonstrated good results for the protections of pruning wounds to avoid infections by the pathogens to cause grape trunk diseases. Regarding to the biocontrol agents, studies by Beckwings and Group showed that vines asymptomatic for grape trunk diseases had in their trunks a strong association with Bacillus and Stratomyces, whereas in symptomatic plants this association was not observed. Many papers have studied bacteria in their biocontrol of stemmed diseases and grapevine. Any species Bacillus subtilis was considered promoting in the protection of pruning ants. For the fungi antagonist, Trichoderma species was the most student's agent over the last few years. In addition to being considered very efficient in protecting pruning ants against grape trunk diseases, they were also able to colonize the trunk of vines. Although many biocontrol agents have been efficient in the control of some of the pathogens that cause grape trunk diseases, there is still no no age about a microorganism capable of controlling a high age of pathogens that cause grape trunk diseases. So, strategies such as a mixture of two or more agents of biocontrol may be interesting for the management of this disease. In grapevine trunk disease requires integrate management practices, taking into account in the interactions between microorganisms, cover crops, and making a complex habitat in which soil and trunk pathogens are in balance with beneficial fungi. 
thus making the control of diseases possible and helping to increase the productivity of the legado vineyard. Here are our references about case study. And thanks for your attention and we are open to questions and doubts.